It was one of these hot days in Dubai. I was standing in one of the coolest hotels in the city with a view to the famous landmarks. And in front of me, in the boardroom, were top-tier partners from consulting firm, people who counsel CEOs and governments around the world. Their advice affects global economy on a daily basis. I'm standing here ready to talk to them about inclusion. This small influential group was expecting me to tell them what they should be talking to their clients when it comes to diversity, equity, and inclusion. And as much as we were there to talk about it, we were there to talk about so much more. I looked at them and I asked, do you know why you're here today? There were some confused faces in the room, some people saying, we're really looking forward to your perspective, what's new in the research around the topic, and some people bluntly said, DNI, not again. What are you going to tell us that we need more racial and gender equality in the organization? And looking at you here today, I'm sensing a little bit of the say. According to the World Economic Forum, we still need 151 years to achieve gender equality. When it comes to racial equality, here in South Africa, only 14% of top executive roles are held by black South Africans, despite making 81% of the total population. In Germany, people of African descent are the minority, but they earn 25% less on national average. Wherever we look globally, we do see inequality. But is this something we should really accept? Whatever your thoughts are today, whatever your opinion is, I really want to ask you to just park it, shake it off, do whatever you want to do with it, and just give me a few minutes to share with you what I believe is the one thing we need to do in order for us not to wait 151 years for this remarkable change to happen. In my company, I spent the last four years learning, researching, interviewing, and working with leaders and corporate communities on developing inclusive leadership capabilities. And what I can see around the world is that we're only touching the surface of the problem. And that is because we're not looking at the root of the problem, and that is human character. Human character, why is this a problem? Well, let me just shape a little bit of a big picture and connect some dots for you. Every year, important organizations and firms publish reports on the state of DNI globally and its important importance for companies to outperform their competitors. There are over 200 TED Talks on the topic of diversity and inclusion. Already in 2020, the World Economic Forum estimated companies worldwide will spend seven and a half billion on diversity-related efforts, which is supposed to double to 15.4 billion by 2026. That is quite a lot of money. According to the International Labour Organization, one out of five people have, to some extent, been affected by discrimination and harassment. One out of four does not feel valued at work. Gallup's 2023 engagement report, global report, showed us that only 23% people globally are fully engaged. 59% quiet quitters and 18% um, actively disengaged. Research tells us that formation, cultivation of mature and healthy character um, directly improves organization performance. When employees rate their, CEO, rate their CEO's character highly, those companies have on average five times more return on assets than companies whose CEOs rated really poorly on character. Character-based judgment supports superior performance its lack explains misconduct and poor decision-making, and character has a powerful influence on, on individual well-being and sustained performance. So it matters on individual leadership and organizational level. Inclusion research tells us that leaders with high humility and empathy are more likely to engage in inclusive leadership behaviors and inclusive communication. So what I told these executives in the room is that we need to come back to the beginning, 
to the heart of it all, to the core definition of inclusion. And that is that we value individual uniqueness and we create a sense of belonging for all. Before we put any diversity goals, before we put any trainings in place, before we have all these fancy metrics, and don't get me wrong, they're important and I truly believe in them. But we need to start with the root of exclusion, and that is us and our character. And you're thinking, this is not very easy, is it? No, it's not. And we're not doing it often enough because we believe the character is only linked to personality and not the foundation of who we are. We believe that a person with technical skills is enough to lead and not a person with a mature and healthy character. And we believe that character is a fixed trait that can be developed. But when we show up with courage, honesty and vulnerability to be the better human beings, amazing things can happen. So the thing about character is that it's about way more than ethics. It's the foundation for all judgment, decision-making, and any behavior of a leader. The problem is research is consistent and tells us that we have a natural tendency to choose and promote people who are self-centered, charismatic, overconfident, and narcissistic individuals as leaders. And I know I might have triggered some negative emotions, but the thing is, if we really want to see inclusive individuals, leaders, and organizations, we cannot run away from the problem. Because starting with character is being inclusive and not doing inclusion. Okay, so what does it actually mean in practice? What do we need to see more of in ourselves and people in order to see more inclusive organizations and societies? Number one, humility. Are you aware of your own limitations? Do you recognize that you don't always have all the answers, but people in the room with you might? Humility is not thinking less of yourself. It's thinking about yourself less. Number two, integrity. The person that people trust. Do you make all your decisions from ethics foundation? Do you do the right thing? Or do you do the easy thing? Number three, courage to advocate for fairness. Do we call out our colleagues when we see inappropriate behavior? It might be hard to accept, but the thing is, if we see a problem and we don't challenge the problem, we automatically become the problem. Number four, justice. Going beyond what is just fair. You know, actively working to dismantle systemic barriers just be thought because things are the way they have been. It doesn't mean that's how it should be. Number five, curiosity, the seeker. Are you actively mining for the gold in your people? Because curiosity is a very cool decision-making tool, but it's also a, a, a generosity. It's a way to encourage others to bring their unique insights. And judgment, number six, navigating critical issues on your team. Are we let letting one single story to form our view? Or are we using evidence and empathy to actually guide us? And last, respect. Whether you agree or not, whether you like a person or not, whether you're a CEO, manager, receptionist, or a cleaner, we have to treat each other with respect. The thing about inclusion, it's not perfect, and it will never be. Um, it's like this dance of understanding your intention versus your impact. There will be days where we get it right, and there will be days where we get it wrong. And on those days, it's important we seek to understand why and change to create a positive impact. Because inclusion is a collaborative process. It's something we all create together. Is it too late for our generation? Well, 150 years is too late for me, for my daughter and her daughter. But I do believe that if we include character development in business schools and we recognize, measure and reward our people on good character, we will get there faster. But at the end of the day, it starts with you and I. And each one of us needs to ask this one question. Who am I becoming 
as a person and as a leader. Let's be inclusive and not do inclusion. Thank you.